What's going on, everybody? Uh, ending up week four here for 2024. Uh, just spent a bunch of time on training peaks, going through everybody's stuff for the week, resyncing workouts. Uh, one side note on that, I can take care of it. If you do uh, have a planned run or a bike and you switch them on days and you do it anyway, that's fine. I can always sync them or pair them to where they need to go. You can in the app, if you click the workout, you can actually change what day it is. Just let me know if you're going to do that just so I know that it was you that changed it and it wasn't, uh, you know, uh, myself because, you know, whatever. Just reach out, let me know, but no big deal. Uh, really, this is going to just hit on a few topics that have come up this week uh, with a few of you and some, again, the running is always a, just a hot topic, uh, mainly because uh, no matter who I'm training right now, whether you are a runner doing marathons this year, run races, or a triath uh, triathlete, you're running. Everybody that is being coached right now is doing some type of run training. Uh, and let alone in triathlon, it is a, a, a big part, uh, you know, the second lar longest part of the race after the bike. And it is also just the most stressful thing we do out of all the different sports, whether it's strength training, swimming, biking, and then we have the inevitable running. I can honestly say now since helping people and doing this with the coaching that uh, I would say the ob obvious most uh, or getting injured I should say or having to take time off from training due to an injury or overuse or whatever it is typically always affects the run. I really don't recall anybody who's had any type of injuries where they couldn't bike, but they could run, or they couldn't swim, but they could run. So typically, what happens first? You lose the ability to run. Uh, and we're going to talk about some things in a little bit with that on why it's important to try and prevent that. It is just the most stressful thing we can do with the body endurance-wise. The loads induced on the body over running and running at harder intervals than we need to most of the time. And depending on our size, our shape, our run style, how we land, there's so many things involved in it that can cause and lead to this overuse, inevitably injury, then we don't train and then we lose the progress that we made in running. Because like I always tell everybody, fitness and running especially is not instant. In the world of everything is instant, Instapod, Instagram, Insta, you know, everything, there's no such thing as Insta fitness. So take that for what it's worth. It's something that needs to be built with consistency and the right consistency week after week, month after month, training block after training block, season after season. And I have some data to back up what is going on here with that as well. And, uh, you know, I'll try and keep this at about like a 10 minute video or something like that. So again, let's just talk about, well, first of all, on the training peak side of things everybody's being super consistent just with the training like the holidays are over we're a few weeks in i know you're starting to like smell race season coming along the runners out there are hitting some uh some of their runs already you know with like new york road runners races two people doing the half marathon tomorrow so awesome stuff this is the time of year where it just gets exciting for me as well and again so running let's talk about this first you know, it's January. It's unless we have you have a major goal coming up. Uh, we're in like training mode. We're in base mode. There's different. I like to break running down, especially running because, you know, biking, we can kind of get away with pushing a little bit more, putting some extra hard intervals in. We can kind of recover pretty quick from that swimming. Hey, I always say if you can get to the pool, get to the pool as often as you can and swim. But with the running, we have to be very tactical with how we approach our running. Uh, you know, you, we all have runner friends. We all have runner friends who get sidelined from time to time. Uh, and then, you know, that's just, it's this inevitable battle of back and forth. You take time off, you get back, you try and jump into where you were, you try and force through the progress or work through that injury. And it just, it doesn't work out a lot of the time. So talking about zones, talking about testing, all that stuff. What do we need to remember though? Like the basics of this is we need to learn and I don't, I'm going to delete the word slow as much as I can from this. We need to learn what's easy. And I hate to say easy as well, because then we imply if I'm running easy or I'm doing easy work, nothing, I'm not building progress. But uh, a quote that, you know, came up again that I told one of my athletes and it's cool because it stuck with him and he brought it up this week again was 
For myself, I approach it this way. I'd rather be consistently good than occasionally great. And what does that mean? I'd rather be consistent with my training and good with my training than occasionally great with it. What that means is push a little hard for a short period of time, maybe have a good race result, maybe not. Then I get injured, I have to take a step back. So I can be occasionally great, but I wanna be consistently good with this because that's gonna to lead to those results that you're looking for. So you need to learn what, what easier running is and why that's important is if you look at the total amount of volume that we do week for week or month for month, training block for training block, because as you've seen, usually I do things in, in a training block of about four weeks typically. Um, if you're going to run, say, 20 miles for the week, and let's talk volumize for that, we like to keep at least, you know, 80% of that needs to be at these easier paces, these aerobic paces that are doing something specific for your body down inside. We're working at a certain heart rate level so that we can build the mitochondria, the blood volume, and the ability and the, the oxygen consumption that we need to do endurance running. Because every athlete, again, that's on here is either training for, I don't think anybody, nobody's doing like a couch to 5K right now or a couch to 10K. We're all training for half marathons, marathons, half Ironmans, Ironmans. These are distance races, endurance races. We need to have this super solid aerobic base that we can build off of as we get closer to the races. If we were able to be consistently good, get the training done smart that we needed when we're 12 weeks out, 16 weeks out, 20 weeks out, depending on the event we're doing, that's when we start building off that base, peaking, hitting our race where we need to hit it, getting the result that you want to get, and then recovering, going back down, and building back better for the next time. But every time we have to step away from running, you start to lose it pretty quick. But it's not that we can't gain it back quick. It's that we try and jump back in where we left off and it just becomes this game back, you know, over and over again, a struggle to kind of just find where we were. So if you don't have to take a break by being smart and not getting injured, boom, we're good and we can consistently keep going through. So consistency is key with that. And again, learning what easy is and this is the perfect time of year to do that because you know we're just base building we're hitting the miles we need to be consistent we're trying to get that two three four runs done a week and just getting them done getting the consistency i don't like to add intensity this time of year for most runners unless they have that goal race coming up you know short term is because we need that consistency we need to build that muscular endurance that cardiovascular endurance so that we can play a little bit as we get closer to race day as it gets nicer out and uh, and really have some fun with the training. Uh, so let's talk. So I'm, I'm going to see, and I really wish I could, uh, I'm trying to figure it out. So if anybody knows, I use this program on here and there's no way that I want to be able to get like my phone up on the screen so I can show you some things on here. So I'm going to see if you can pop them on here. If not, I'll just explain them to you. I sent something to somebody. So we do these heart rate tests. We do these 20 minute tests, something I might start implementing with some of you this year, just as another ancillary part of data that we can look at with running is going to be maybe doing a mile test. It's a good milestone. It's just good to know what is my max, you know, go to a track, warm up, and maybe we can do it like as an event, just as it gets a little nicer out, uh, maybe right before the spring is, you know, meet up, warm up, do some, some, some great, uh, you know, warm up work and then test. And you'll, you'll run it hard when everybody's there. Trust me, we'll do a couple different cycles of it and run. See what your best mile is. And we can test that once or twice throughout the year to kind of see the benchmark you have for the mile. Because I like to take some things as well. I have other coaching resources, other people I follow. And I like to verify data. The last video I talked about with threshold work, I verified my data, my zones with you know, my run feel. And I wanted to make sure everything lined up. And it did. If you noticed, uh, if not, I, you know, look back on my public YouTube channel. I went and did an actual VO2 max test inside of a lab at Adelphi University. When, you know, you see the person, uh, you might have seen some of the videos or uh, pictures on Instagram of people doing it. When they're on the treadmill, they have the mask on. They're getting their lactate uh, taken from their ear and everything like that. The biggest takeaway with that whole test that I did was I was able to take their actual scientific data of what was going on inside of me, my oxygen consumption, um, oxygen supply, my lactate levels and my blood, and actually compare that to my efforts, paces and heart rate zones 
that I use for myself and the athletes. And it was within 95% accurate of these benchmark tests that we do. If we're getting the accurate data out of you know our sensors and watches and heart rate straps and everything like that. So outside of that, what are we talking about with this? Sometimes we can just dumb it down. And I like to look at it as you know guidelines, right? So again, we have the data, stick with your heart rate zone, stick with the stuff that you have. But I also found uh, you know these quick little graphs, I sent them to somebody before where you can you know, they, they offer up just a guideline, quick reference. If you know your benchmark mile, where your easy pace should be, about where your marathon pace would be, about where that hard one hour threshold work is probably, and then where that speed work is, those intervals, 400 meter, 800 meter, those workouts you're going to start seeing on your calendar start popping up. So I'm just going to throw this out there and, and read you this stuff. So if you as an athlete can run an eight minute mile, meaning one mile, all out eight minutes yeah i ran 805 a mile that's my pr awesome according to this easy chart right here it's going to say that your easy pace should be about 1035 to 1135 a mile and you may say whoa 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 i, I usually run at like 940 a mile i know i've been telling you you need to slow it down a little bit at least 80% of your volume needs to be in those zones to prevent injury, to build endurance, to make all those changes inside of our body that we need to be endurance athletes. And now if you go to a nine minute a mile pace, it's saying your easy paces should be 1120 to 1220. And that does correspond to some of the pace charts that I've sent out for people here. And again, I like to verify uh, the data on here as well so i said you know let me go look at myself and see what it recommends for my easy run paces so i found my fastest mile time on there uh, and then the chart that would correspond for myself it recommends my easy paces be between 8 30 and 9 30 a mile now all my stuff is public for good reason because i preach what i play and i play what i preach to all my athletes i don't do anything secret on the side and you know give you different uh training to do is you can look my daily midweek runs i run uh, with katie a lot in this group i run at a 9 920 it depends how we feel that day it depends how much talking we did like a 9 920 pace that fits right in even the lower end the slower end of those easy paces uh, it says my threshold paces are at about 702 per mile and if you remember the video i just did the other day my threshold pace was 655 when i tested it earlier this week so again within a few seconds per mile and speed work says I should be somewhere down close to, you know, 6 to 6.30 a mile. That's typically where my 400, 800 meter repeats land. So again, just a quick guideline, another source of information that kind of just backs up and verifies all the stuff that we work through here. So trust the process, trust it. Um, there's one other thing I, I want to go over um, with this that'll be uh, pretty cool to, to let you know about. Um, but again, why is this super important? Because we're talking injury prevention. Now, especially if you're an athlete, ask yourself this, do some self-evaluation, even since before you started working with me. How often since you started running do you get hurt? If you are somebody who typically gets these aches and pains and has to take a break from running, we really need to reassess and really pay attention, especially if you're, you're more injury prone for whatever reason, we need to figure out why and really slow it down even more. Because what good is it if we get back into it once we feel better and then we have to lapse again and take time off from training for a reoccurring or new injury every single time. Um, I'd rather you slow it down, be consistent, be, uh, and just be able to get the mileage in. You know, being consistently good, right? Go back to the beginning. Consistently good for a longer period of time is going to beat those quick, quick uh, runs that you got in there. Now, some tips on how to do this is if you do have a four, five, six mile run, whatever it is, or a longer run on the weekend, and you know, we can convert that to a time based run, and that does help some people just get the pacing out of their head. Getting, I got to get this done as fast as possible. Or if you're not really don't like running the best out of all these sports sometimes you just get out there and want to get it done as fast as possible so if i think you should be running at about a 10 minute per mile and you have a four mile run just go run for 40 minutes 
Go run 20 minutes out, 20 minutes back. Don't worry about your pace. Make sure your heart rate's in the zone it needs to be in and, and you'll be fine. You will build the fitness, trust the process. Again, we need to get a few weeks, a few months of solid foundation before we can really build on that, especially with the running. Uh, and again, you usually have an triathletes, a workout coming up the next day. So by not hitting yourself too often on these runs and being in the right zones, they're all structured where you'll recover properly and quickly for your next workout the next day. Uh, one other thing with your zones, when I send you that sheet on the piece of paper, uh, if, if you, most of you have Garmin watches, there is a side here that will allow you to convert it to Garmin. Garmin only allows five zones. We use a seven zone system because they have that X and Y built in there. I've done some videos on the zones. It shows you how to convert it to the Garmin, how to get in there through the app to adjust your zones. And then if you have a problem with that and you need help matching those zones up because the instructions aren't really matching up, uh, let me know. I can walk you through it. I did that with somebody this past week. Why that's important, uh, which is going to be maybe another topic video, is it allows your Garmin to also play nicer with your effort levels. Uh, if you notice, a lot of people like to post their Garmin watch as unproductive, overreaching, all these crazy things. It's because your zones are probably not set up properly for your activities in your Garmin. So it may think you're either overtraining or undertraining and you're not getting the stress load like we talked about with the training peaks the past week the proper stress load and the proper structure um you know in your training program so get those garmin zones set up the good thing is garmin only allows the five zones so we keep zone one zone two from training peaks our seven zone system into zone one of garmin so if it says zone one which is actually labeled it says warm up if it actually says what zone it is that's the zone one that we want to be in for all these easy runs it's that first zone. It's like a gray zone on the uh, the meter, depending on what watch face you have. And that's about it. And just one other side note, which I was like, I have this app. It's called Run Gap. It tracks all of my workouts since I've ever basically started. Um, I needed the app for some other reason in the past, and I just I had to buy it, so I still have it. The cool thing is I said, let me look something up today. I want to look back at all the running I've done since I really started running, which was sometime in 2017. Uh, and now for myself, a side note with the running is, thankfully, knock on wood, that since I started running in 2017, I have not had any major laps in running. I never took time off from running, away from training. Uh, I've done taking some, some deload week or weeks after the season is over, but I've always just thrown a run or two on the, on the week. Thankfully, through sickness, I was able to get a run in here and there. Uh, so it's been very consistent since 2017. So you're talking, you know, uh, a good solid full six calendar years of training, of running. But why this is important, uh, you can look at duration, distance on here as well. So you can see every year there's been more training. We progressed with volume and look at that nice step. It's a consistent progression because we can't reach for the moon. We don't want to do that right away when we start training or you first get into sport. You baseline, take the stairs all the way to you know where your, your goals and ambitions are. But outside of all of that, this chart, it's the other way, right? Super high and it drops down through last year. You know what that is? That's average pace per mile ran for the entire year. So I actually slowed down uh the last two years have been pretty consistent within a second of each other average for all the miles that year why this is important is i used to run faster every day and what happened the first uh, i got away with that for two years of it thinking i needed to run faster every time midweek run hour run i need to run faster than than last week oh i ran 805 a mile last week i better run 803 a mile this week I was a little younger. I was in my mid 30s. So recovery wasn't too much of an issue, but it did build up on me and it wound up overuse injury, runner's knee, plantar fasciitis. Going into the year of COVID, I was pretty banged up training for my first 50K. I was borderline like, I don't know what's going on right now. Everything got shut down. All the races got shut down. I was like, that's kind of a blessing because I would have probably trained through it and tried to do these races that year. So what happened? All my intensity went down, but I stayed consistent. 
I ran with Katie all through COVID that year. We ran so much together on that Path and Beth page, but we just chilled. We ran, we were consistent, we talked, we chatted. We were just running. We were just running because there was nothing else to do. Um, and my paces, we just kept it easy. And what happened? Started to do all this research, started to look things up, started to realize that actually running slower is actually what you're supposed to do most of the time. It allows you then to run faster on the days you're supposed to run fast. I used to show up at track workout, my, you know, my speed workout once a week before that. And I was just didn't want to run fast. I was trashed in the morning. I just had no motivation. Now when those workouts come up, I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. I want to get out there and put a good effort in because those are the days that call for it. Uh, again, so that's that's the important part there. And what I noticed that year, specifically, basically during COVID, during the end of 2020, was we just it was getting into the winter probably at the end of 2020. Running, we're at the path, you know, looking down. I always wear a heart rate strap. Uh, I always like the, that accurate data, and I'm starting to notice. I'm like, you know something's not right here. It says my heart rate is whatever, you know, whatever it was. And I said, you know, that seems low. I don't, maybe the battery's dying. Maybe something's not happening. Let me make sure everything's good after the run. And the next few runs, I noticed that as well. It was actually so off what it usually was when I was tracking it that I actually went and bought a new heart rate strap. because I'm like, this thing, there's no way it's right. Put the next one on, same thing. What happened was I became so efficient at running because of all those miles I did at those at that easy paces because I was able to just train consistently and at those paces I was supposed to be at to make these changes in my body that I got very efficient and now I run with a very low heart rate on my easy runs and my heart rate recovers really fast after hard efforts. Uh, and again, that's something that's not built in a few months or a season or even two seasons. Uh, I mean, some people are a little more naturally gifted, uh, but it was a lot of work to get to the point that I'm at now. And the good part about that is you become so motivated and entrenched in how much time you put into that work that you really want to work hard, well, not hard, you want to work smart to keep it. Because I don't want to get hurt or overtrain because then I'm going to lose all this progress. So I'm at this point right now where I can really just enjoy running. I'm not too stressed about getting faster or getting better for myself. But over those last couple years, even when my average pace per mile for all my miles for the year got slower, you follow me online, I'm still able to PR a lot of my races. 5K times, 10K times, half marathon times, those are still getting faster because now I can run my that like 20 up to 20% I should say of my volume when it's race season at better faster intervals because I'm more refreshed. So again, I just hope that was just like a big general overview and maybe some motivation on to really dig down and understand that some of you are like knocking it out of the park and getting it like you saw when I posted some of those graphs uh, earlier in the week about, you know, zone 2 for the cool kids. Um, but again, it's all about longevity and sustainability in the sport. If you love what you're doing and you love the training that you're doing, you're going to want to keep doing it. And if you get hurt or sidelined, and again, things do happen outside of our control, but if we can control the controllables, you're going to have such a better or so much more enjoyment out of the sport. So, and then you'll have the longevity that you're looking for. If you're looking to do this, I want to, I mean, I'm going to turn 40 in April and I'm looking to do this straight through my forties into my fifties. Cause I just love it so much and love the community and love all of you. So that's what I got for tonight. Uh, it was a little more long winded than I wanted, you know, put this in your earphones or something before you go to bed. I'm sure it'll put you to sleep, but keep crushing it. Keep getting out there and keep getting after it. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch you next time.